How to make money off inflation. Coming up. Ernesto from Attaboy Cowboy. On this channel, we give you health and wealth tips to help you be more successful. Now, everyone in the world right now is going through inflation pains. I made a video about a year ago and I talked about the upcoming inflation boom, and here we are. We're right in the midst of it, and it's only going to get worse. There's a lot of issues causing it supply chain bottlenecks, etc. But there's no way to escape it. It's going to affect the entire planet, and it's going to be ongoing for at least another year or two, maybe more. So what's the best way to react to it? Well, first let me share with you an inflation story. <laughs> I think we'll put things in the context. And then I'm gonna talk about what you shouldn't do. And I'm gonna talk about what you should do with inflation. Now, although medicine is my work, my business is economics and real estate investing, etc. So I'm always keeping up with all the indicators. I read about all the you know, latest economic news, etc. And this all reminds me of a trip I took to Zimbabwe where they have the inflation is in the millions. And it really changed the way I looked at things in the world. But then, maybe a year or two later, I went to Venezuela. And that was even more eye-opening. And let me explain why. I went to Venezuela, and this was about six years ago. And it was right before the huge mess we're in right now. And I needed some local currency to go, you know, go out to eat, pay for my hotel, etc. So I went to go change some money. And I changed 40 bucks, 220s. And I went into the, the cash house, and I couldn't believe it. I've never seen this anywhere in the world. I came out with a bag like this of money. I felt like I had just robbed a bank or something. And I tried to fit it into my backpack, and I couldn't. It was so big, and it was kind of heavy. It was all like bills. Now, this is just a, a bag of trash here and paper, but I wanted to give you an idea how big it was. So I ended up squeezing it as much as I could into my backpack and leaving the rest of it in my hotel room. And everywhere I went to eat, or to do anything, I had to pull out these huge wads of cash. And it was kind of weird. I remember I went to a restaurant, and it was me and two other people, it was three of us. And it was, the bill was basically 80 cents, which is nothing. It wasn't even a dollar. But in the local currency, because it had devalued so much, I pulled out a wad of cash like this. It was this huge pile of like, you know, I don't know, millions of pesos, of Bolivarians to pay for my, my meal, it cost 80 cents. So just give you an idea, everywhere I went, I had to hand out packets like this of cash to pay for simple things. So since then, it's gotten even worse. They have over 8 million percent inflation in Venezuela. To give you an idea, I did some calculations. If I were to take these $40, I would get more currency that would fit in a full-size semi-truck. That's crazy. It's tons and tons of paper. It's so worthless that it's better off uh, being used as toilet paper or as uh, bonfire debris or whatever. People are not using it to actually buy stuff anymore. In fact, the country is slowly becoming dollarized like Panama, like Ecuador, like El Salvador. Those countries also had rampant inflation and they just couldn't keep up with it. They, it's just too crazy. Like I said, people don't want to walk around with bags of money like this to pay for a sandwich. I mean, it's just be crazy. If you put that into perspective, that 80 cent meal that I bought, that I had to pull out a big wad of cash like this, I would have, I would have had to fill up the back of a truck, like a Ford F-150, just to pay for that, that meal for three people. So you can see how inflation can quickly get way out of control and it could just like destroy an economy and all sorts of things could happen. Now you, you could say, well, why don't they just become dollarized? The dollar's stable, it's a good currency, it's the world reserve currency. It's not really the best option because you lose a lot of your freedom. Now we have a, a, a central bank and we adjust our interest rates. That allows us to have control over our monetary policy, to control when we want our economy to grow or we want it to slow down. If we want it to grow, we just cut interest rates, make money cheap, everybody borrows, everybody spends, they invest, they go to school. When, when we start getting high inflation, they start raising interest rates. That's why people will think, well, hey, wait a minute, maybe I'm not gonna take a loan out for rebuilding my kitchen or buying a new car because the interest rate's pretty high. So that slows economic uh, activity and actually helps get inflation under control. 
That's why in the 80s, when Paul Volcker was our Treasury Secretary, we had inflation in double digits. It was into the 20s. And they had to raise up interest rates to match that. A perfect example is my aunt, Delia. She had what were probably worth hundreds of millions of dollars now in real estate. But, you know, she had these fixed rents, but inflation was over 20%. So they had variable interest rates on the mortgages. So the rates were going into the 20s. So imagine, I, I remember I, I was working with a property where the interest in the property was 3%. And the payment was about 1800 a month. But then it jumped to 12%. This is in 2008 when we had the mortgage crash. So the payment jumped from 1800 to 4300 a month. Now, that's going to break most people. Most people don't have that much of flex that much flexibility in their income where they could say, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll fork out an extra $3,000 a month to pay the mortgage." It doesn't work like that. So that's one of the reasons why we had the economic downturn and the real estate bust in 2008. Now, Let's get back to now, 2021. Now, this is a different scenario. In 2008, we had these crazy real estate loans, which pretty much caused all the damage, but inflation was under control. It was always around the historical, historical mark in the United States, which is right around 3%. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you have a dollar, at or a hundred dollars, let's say, and you have 3% inflation, at the end of the year, that hundred dollars is worth 97 dollars because you lost three percent now you might say but wait a minute i looked at my bank account it still says a hundred it does it does still say you have a hundred dollars but the price purchasing parity dropped the ppp so i can no longer buy a hundred cheeseburgers at a dollar each those cheeseburgers are now let's say two dollars so now i'm buying 50 cheeseburgers understand so even though the number is the same the amount of goods and services you can buy decreases because of inflation so it cuts into your spending power. Now, how do you control that? And what's the best thing to do? This presents some very unique opportunities. You just have to know how to find them. Now, I'll give you an example. Fixed uh, rate mortgages or fixed rate loans. Let's say you have a student loan and your student loan is 4% right now and you're working feverishly at your job trying to get money to pay off your student loans. Should you pay them off right now? No, you should not. Why? Because inflation right now in the United States is running over 6%. We'll say 6% to keep it simple. That means if your interest rate on your student loan is 4% and the inflation is 6%, that means you're paying negative 2%. That means the lender is losing money by, by giving you that loan. So do not pay off student loans or any fixed interest loans that are below 6%. You don't want to do that right now. Now, if you're going to get the money and you're going to go buy a car or go waste it on clothes or extra electronics or whatever, then pay off your loan. But as long as you're disciplined and you have money to invest, invest it. Don't pay off fixed interest loans. That's the worst you could do right now. What you want is you want the lender to absorb the cost of that inflation. You don't want to absorb that. On the same deal, you don't want to spend on things that are going to go the opposite way, where you're going to be losing money due to inflation. Now, you don't want to participate in loan programs or lending money to anybody or anything like that where you're not going to get a 6% return or higher. So would you buy bonds right now? No, I wouldn't recommend that. Treasury bills? No. They pay like 1%, 2%. You're basically losing 4%, 5%, and the government is gaining 4 or 5%. That's why right now is actually a really good time for the U.S. government to spend as much as they want. Some people say, well, hey, that's going to cause more inflation. Well, not really. If you give people money, like uh, stimulus checks and stuff, then yeah, everybody's going to go out and buy you know, iPhones or laptops or whatever. And yeah, it's going to cause inflation. That's called demand and supply. If you have a high demand for these laptops and there aren't enough of them, it drives the price up. Let's say there's only one left and it's $100 and three people want it. They're going to start bidding the price up. That's what's happening right now with inflation. That's why everything is going up, all the goods and services. I do a lot of construction and I'm doing construction. I'm trying to find supplies and I just can't find stuff. It's stuck out on boats on the ocean. So guess what happens? People are bidding the prices up. I've been buying materials. They're going up 10, 20, 30% because they can. The store says, hey, I got all these people that want to buy this stuff. I'm just going to mark the price up. So do the middlemen. So do the everybody. Then the shipping goes up and the labor and gasoline. It's just all those things are wrapped into it. 
that, and actually that's what causes inflation. Someone asked me, what causes inflation? Well, let's say this book, for example, it costs three bucks to print it. But let's say now that the gas prices are five bucks a gallon in California, which they are. <laughs> so now they have to transport this. They have to mail it to me. All their costs go up. So they have to pass it down to the consumer. They have to raise this price. And then let's talk about labor shortages. There's labor shortages right now. So how do they attract people? Raise wages. So now they have to pay the people that print this cover, that cut the sheets, they have to pay them more. So you can see how it kind of trickles down. Everything starts going up. Food's going up because gasoline goes up. All of our food is grown with tractors and trucks and refrigerators and uh, fertilizers and pesticides are made out of petroleum products like gasoline. Gasoline's over five bucks, so everything's gonna go up. That makes the price of the food go up. Then the employees need more money. They wanna get paid more because their money's worth less. Their price purchasing parity has decreased. If someone's making 10 bucks an hour and they can go to the store and buy 10 cheeseburgers for them and their kids, but all of a sudden now they're only able to buy five, they're gonna be like, dude, I need some more money. Or I'm not gonna work picking this fruit or printing these books or whatever. You gotta give them more money or they're gonna leave, especially when there's a labor shortage. So all these things affect everything and it drives the price up of everything, your clothes, you name it. That's what's causing inflation. Now let's talk about what you should do to make money off inflation. Now you wanna play the opposite. This is a sweet time for real estate, okay? <laughs> and I'm gonna give you ways to invest from someone that has $5 to someone that has a million dollars. There's always opportunities for people to invest. Now a lot of people that are writing to me and asking questions are asking about crypto. Crypto is the conversation of the day. There's a lot of interesting things happening in crypto, but it, it still remains to be seen. It's not a stable investment. Now there are some opportunities, especially in the short run, because so many people are piling into it because of FOMO, fear of missing out. Everybody's talking about it. My gardener, my dentist, whatever, everybody. And they're just like, wow, I'm missing out. I'm hearing these stories about this guy that spent, like, what did he put? $8,000 in, in the Shibu Inu, and a year later he had like 3.5 billion or something. That's awesome. Who wouldn't want that? So sure, if you have a few hundred or a thousand extra and you want to throw it into that, go for it. Why not? But I mean, is it a stable investment? No. I was reading about it, and I was looking at the market cap of some of these. And I'll just use one, like Shibu Inu. It's worth about 35 billion right now with all the people investing in it. And it's worth like 0 0.0001 or something like that. It's not even worth a penny, each one. Now, if it were to reach a penny, it would go up a lot, obviously. If it went up to a dollar, the market for Shibu Inu would be worth a hundred trillion dollars. Now, the US economy produces about 22 trillion a year. I don't see Shibu Inu being worth a trillion dollars. But anyway, that's a separate conversation. So what should you invest in? Well, what, what is the scarcest commodity in the world? A lot of times people start going to gold, silver. I don't like those investments. They do go up during inflation. A lot of people pull their money out of currencies. They buy gold bars, silver bars. I made a video about that. I talk about that. It's good in the short run, but you never know when it's gonna, the floor is going to fall out. That happened to me. I bought a lot of you know precious metals, uh, silver, and it was up in the 50s. And then the price dropped down into the $12 range. So it was a huge loss. It's very unpredictable. I don't recommend it. What's a lot more stable? Real estate. What's happening with real estate? Well, we live on planet Earth and only about 30% of the planet has land on it that is habitable. The rest of it is water. 70% of the planet is water. Population is growing out of control. We're overpopulated. We got way too many people. Housing prices are out of control. In fact, in the almost 20 years I've been doing real estate, I've never seen the increases in rents I'm seeing right now. We're flipping places where people are leaving and rents are jumping 15, 20% from like a year ago, that's huge. And what, why? Because there's just a big lack of housing. There's a, a housing shortage, there's a land shortage, material shortage, and we're overpopulated. We have way too many people. Now, why is it a good investment? Let me tell you why. <laughs> You're gonna get loans on properties that are gonna automatically produce money. I was talking about this with a client yesterday. Dude, you get a loan for 3%, inflation 6%. You're already making 3% of the loan automatically. You borrow 100,000, you're making 3,000 a year on it. You borrow 200,000, you're making 6,000 automatically. Now, how does that work? Well, let's say you borrow 100,000 
and you paid 3,000 interest charges. So you lost 3,000, let's say. But the value of that money went down 6%. It lost 6,000. So you actually gained 3,000. So what can you do? Get some fixed rate loans right now, whatever, for, for investing if you can. Take out some loans, as long as they're fixed. You don't want variable interest rates. And take advantage of this negative interest rate you're gonna get pretty much on all your real estate loans or investment loans. Now, this is not something that's gonna be available all the time. This is an anom anomaly. Remember, inflation just kind of popped up on us all of a sudden, and it's gonna take a while for banks and interest rates to catch up. They're gonna catch up. The interest rates are gonna shoot up. It's gonna cool the housing market. It's gonna cool consumption. That's what they have to do to slow down this inflation. It's inevitable. But what can you do? You gotta hurry up and act. <laughs> Take out some long-term loans. This is the best time to buy real estate. People say, but prices are so high. It's, I'm gonna wait till it goes down. Okay, well, when's it gonna go down? Can you tell me when? I don't see that. I don't see that happening for the next five years or something. There just isn't anything in real estate data, in economic data, nothing. This shows it's gonna go down. Now, can it go down? Of course, nothing's guaranteed. But look at the long term. I went, look at the video I made on gold and precious metals, stocks, and real estate. Over the last 100 years, 50 years, 10 years, real estate has blown out every other investment. Nothing compares, it just doesn't. Now, of course, if you're lucky enough to pick that right stock, like NVIDIA or Tesla or something like that, then yeah, of course you made a lot of money. But that's not that easy to do. So real estate is really easy and it's for everybody. Now, how can you get started? Well, let me read you a list here I made. Best for minimum investment, arrived homes. You can Google these, you can look them up. There's a bunch of websites, there's apps, just like you can use your cell phone to buy crypto or to buy, you know, use stock to um, buy stock on Robinhood or something. You can download apps just as easy. You can use, there's one called Yield Street. It's best for alternative investing. For REITs, they're called Real Estate Investment Trusts. I like Fundrise. That's a really good one. Um, best for fractional investments. It's called Ground Floor. That's basically they buy a building for hundred thousand. You put a thousand, you're a one percent owner. You put five hundred, you're a zero point five percent owner. You put twenty grand, you're a twenty percent owner. It's just that easy. There's best for accredited investors, which is basically people that have a lot of money. It's called Equity Multiple. You can use Peer Street, P-E-E-R Street for high yield investments. For vetted projects, like construction projects, you use Crowd Street. For public non-traded REITs, which are real estate investment trusts, you can do Realty Mogul. Um, for long-term investments, I like Diversify Fund, D-I-B-E-R-S-Y-F-U-N-D. And then for rental income if you want to be like a landlord but you want to deal with tenants and everything use roof stock you, now you can put like 50 bucks in some of these ten dollars now if you're thinking well why wow, i don't have money to buy a house then start investing in this stuff get just get into it like start investing it goes up a lot when there's a lot of inflation it's probably one of the safest investments you can make over the long run so thank you for listening and from los angeles california this is dr ernesto martinez goodbye